Ezra chapter 10. We come to the conclusion of another book. We look at a continual thing from last night. If you don't like what we talked about last night, you're not going to like what we talked about today because we're going to talk about, again, separation. It's a priority of God that we separate ourselves, that um, our lives be different because we are our lives are lived for Christ. Christ did not act like, Christ did not live like, Christ did not imitate the world. Not one time in his life, and neither did his apostles. Now, when Ezra had prayed, so from chapter 9, verse 5 to 15, that's a prayer. He confessed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down. We see in verse 5, the last chapter, he's on his knees. By chapter 10, verse 1, he's on his face. He's fallen over to the ground. He's in tears, confessing. He said at one point yesterday, I can't even look up at God. I can't even look up at God for this sin of separation that the Jews have not done. He's just fallen forward on the ground. He's laying down. One thing you can learn about prayer, it's not just kneeling. When I was a little boy growing up as Roman Catholic, that's the only thing I ever thought it was, just kneeling. You can pray behind the wheel. You can pray sitting. You can pray laying down. You can pray kneeling. You can pray anywhere. Solomon prays standing up, and he falls to his knees. Because isn't that interesting? When Solomon dedicates the temple, it says that they build a scaffolding for him. He's standing up, and he ends up on his knees. Ezra is on his knees and ends up on his face. Well, look at that. How many years has Solomon fallen down from standing to his knees that Ezra's picked up where Solomon left off and now we leave him on his face? Over the same subject, the temple. Listen, that it coincidinky. Before the house of God. He's, he's right in front of the temple. He's doing this not for a show. He's doing this in front of the people. Not to be, look at what I'm doing. He's not being a Sadducee or, or a, a Pharisee as Jesus said. You know, they pray in an open spot and all that. He Listen, he's confessing. He's crying. He's crying before the people. He wants the people to know. And he wants God to know. He's living as an example. And there are times when in America where we can't pray in school, we can't pray in the football field. Yes, you can. Who says you got to make a show of it? They won't let me pray before a test. You can sit there and pick up the pencil and pray. For the sake of time with these messages that you don't see me pray, but as we're reading the Bible, I'm praying to God about the message and delivering the message. Prayer is important. A very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. There is a conviction through all the people now. That's what we're, that's what, you want a revival in the church? That's what you got to have in the church. You got to have a conviction among the men, among the leaders, among the people, among the children, among the women, among the men. And you don't have that. And you're not going to have that. When you got confusion coming out of the pulpits, you got confusion coming out of the Sunday school, you got confusion coming out of everything. I'm sorry, but I'm amazed now with all the churches that I've been in, and I've been in a lot of them, that there seems to be a thing now where you separate the children from the families. What is that? Back in the days of the revivals and tent meetings and, and, you know, horse corrals and forests, wherever they met, the whole family gathered together. We break in the family apart. We give the old people what they want, the old stuff. We give the young people the young stuff. We give the children the children's stuff. But we don't give them God. There's no conviction. 
And how many people are knocking on the doors for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the King James Bible, for salvation by blood? How many? And Shachaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have transpass, transpa trans, yeah, trespass, couldn't get the word, against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Repentance and confession. He came right out and said, listen, we married strange people. I don't mean they have an eyeball in the middle of their head and a hand sticking out of their chest. Strange means, guess what? They're not God's people. They're not Jewish. If there's one thing that God wanted from Abraham and Sarah was a pure race. And no, it's not the European white man. And no, it's not the colored black man. And what's the first thing that Satan conquered Abraham with by mating with a Egyptian? How about that? You're back where Abraham was. They are mixing their marriages. What's going on in the church today? They're mixing their marriages. And the church is doing it. We are the bride of Christ, and the church is married to Satan in the world and bringing all the junk in. And my friend, that is called adultery, and that is called fornication. And you will be judged. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28? All you got to do is just look in lust. And you're an adulterer. That's all you got to do. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Rise. He's still on his face. I don't know if he's like, you know, nudging him with his foot, nudging him with his hand. Uh, Ezra, get up. Let's get right. When God answers a prayer, get up and get right. Get going. The Bible says, go ye in all the world. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You're going to be a verb. Verb is action. And then arose Ezra. I guess somebody else is writing this part. It's back and forth. It doesn't have to be just one author. We've seen where Ezra said, I, I, me, I. Now, someone's recording, Ezra got up. Somebody was writing down Ezra's prayer. Almost like if he said it out loud. You want a revival in America? You want a revival in your church? Get the world out. Get those strange things out. If God calls them strange, if the Holy Spirit calls them strange, what do you call them? Christian. I was amazed the other day. I was doing, and this has nothing to do with nothing, but it has something to do with something. I was doing, I was doing a thing for, for one of my outlines and all that, and I just looked up Christian Clown Ministries. And you won't believe how many hits on the Internet with an addresses, phone numbers, emails, and everything you can contact, and how to do it, and who you can hire to bring into your church, for a clown ministry. I thought it was original. Tell you the truth. That's strange. What's the first thing when you think about a clown? Is his face is painted up. And you think of Jezebel. That's strange. It's a marriage into the world. 
And you will be down on your face. And the people will be standing around you saying, we want to get right. Help us. And all the leader does is offer more junk. And then we're going to pray for a revival. You're asking God to do something that's wrong. God won't do wrong. Then Ezra rose up before the house of God and went into the chamber of John, Jehanan, the son of Elishbib. I wish they had English names. And when he came to when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water. He fasted. Now there are several different kinds of fast out there. He dr he ate no bread and drank water. All right. Your fast between you and the Lord is what you. Some people drink water. Some people will drink milk. A diabetic needs to pay attention to what he's doing. I mean, there's certain medical causes out there. If you fast one hour, where your body is, that one hour could be two days someone else. But a fast is you getting very serious with God. Again, I've been in churches. Well, we're going to fast Friday. Friday, 6 p.m., we'll meet for having pizza or, or grinders. Or, uh, wait a minute. I thought we are fasting Friday. For he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. He's fasting not because of prayer. He's fasting because of the sin. Well, we fast. For, do you know you really why you're fasting? Is your heart really broken about sin like Ezra is? Ezra's heart was so broken. Show me in chapter 10 where he said anything to anybody. But how did the people respond? They walked up to him and said, we need to get right. Where did that come from? I'll tell you exactly where that came from. That came from the Holy Spirit working in their heart saying, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. He's down there for the sins of the people. You need to confess. And they're walking up there just like Jesus did with the woman caught in adultery. He's writing down the ground and the Holy Spirit convicts them one by one. Now, how do you know between Ezra 10 and, I forget what, I think it's chapter 8 of John. How do you know that Israel in Jesus' time was wicked and beyond control? Because Ezra here in chapter 10, they are coming to the man of God saying, we want to get right, we want to get right. In Jesus' time, they took off. <laughs> And the only sinner that was dealt between God and man was the woman that was brought in adultery. Here the nation is coming by the Holy Spirit to Ezra. This is the last chapter in Nehemiah. Uh, Ezra, excuse me. What are you going to see at the end of the tribulation period? You're going to see the Holy Spirit work in the hearts of the people. There's going to be one man there who's going to be praying, Oh my God, look at all this mess. There's seven years of mess. And they're going to walk up to him somehow, some way. I don't know who. I don't know all the complete details. But we will that day. And they're going to say, What must we do? We need to repent. We need to get right. And then here comes the Messiah. Very small raiment. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of captivity. They, these are the ones that were in Babylon. They're not homebound Jews. 
This is not their home yet. They've only built the temple. They haven't built their home. The city is still in destruction. You're just still known as the children of captivity. You have not truly repented yet to be called the son of God. You just came back. Well, I go to church. That don't mean nothing. When you're standing at the great white throne judgment in this day and age, say, well, I went to church and Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me the everlasting curse of the fire. You got to turn or burn. You got to repent. You got to confess your sin. You got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you're just still known as the world. These are still known as the children of captivity. Now they're starting to make their lives right. They're starting to repent. They're trying to get right now. And whatsoever, oh, excuse me, whosoever would not come within three days, according to the council of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited. Himself separated from the congregation of those that have been carried away. You're not going to believe what you see in verse 8. You're not going to believe it. You're going to see, or you have seen, church discipline. Or, if you don't want to get right, you don't want to be born again, get out of the church house. Don't come back until you you want to do something what God wants you to do. And first of all is be believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved. I'm telling you, find a place where it says in the Bible to bring sinners into the church house. And let them sit there and think they're saved as long as they put money in the plate. Where do you see that? You don't. Well, you're not going to have a big church. There was no big churches in the book of Acts. You say, well, 5,000 got saved. Yeah, but they went house to house. Mighty the word of God grew, but they didn't have multi-billion dollar churches like they do have today and are as dead as anything. The church is not for the lost. You, the Christian, are to go to the lost people and give them the word. And live your life clean so they can watch your testimony after you told them you were a Christian. If you don't tell them who you are, you can live any way you want. There's going to be no difference. There are people out there that live fine as anything can be fine as fine as can be fine, fine. And die and go to hell. Your life, your activities are to cause these people who are lost to come up to you and say, Hey, you got something that I don't have. And I need it. We go on the streets, we pass out gospel tracts because they're not going to come to the church. Listen, you got funerals and you got weddings today that are not in churches anymore. That funny little picture there, you know, come to church before the hearse brings you to the church. A lot of hearses don't bring bodies to the churches no more. Satan read that picture and said, okay, I'll end now. I'll have it at the graveside or I'll do it at the funeral home. Well, we'll get many. We'll get married by by the cliffs or the waterfall or the pretty forest. It is our individual jobs. Like I keep saying, the only reason why we are here is the witness and to be a witness. 
We are either planting seed or we're watering. If you bring an unsaved person into your church, he's going to want to bring unsaved practices in his church. You don't believe me? Go around to the churches. How do they get messed up? By the lost people. Evolution doesn't work. Everything gets worse. You can have 35 saved Christians in the church and one lost family. And that lost family will bring that church down. One apple ruins the whole bushel. And verse number 8 is, you don't want to live right, get out. We're going to confiscate your goods. You're going to forfeit them all because now it become it's not your pop property no more. And you can't say I have any ties to Jerusalem if I don't want to live right. It's gone. How did America get messed up? We put in the Constitution, you can serve any God you want. You have a Constitution right. That's where America failed. Now, I'm not going to fight about our forefathers, what they thought about God, what they didn't think about God. I'll say one thing about the Constitution. I'll say one thing only. God and Jesus Christ should have been in those documents. If God and Jesus Christ was in those documents, then you wouldn't say nothing about the Roman Catholic Church. You can't say nothing about Joseph Smith. You can't say nothing about Islam. They don't belong here. But if you have the right to worship any god you want, bingo, don't don't complain. Don't fight. And when you get somebody that comes up to you, you insulted that Catholic woman by what you said. The truth? What? Have I become an enemy because I told you the truth? Sanctify sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. They want to get right. What did our pastor say the other day about having a prayer meeting on Saturday night? And two or three people come. But we want a revival. Can't have Sunday school because a lot of people don't come. But we want a revival. That mega multi dillon church down the road must be doing something wrong. They got all the people in it. And they got people giving them money who are not even members of that church. What's wrong with that? But to the eyes of the world, they're a success. Once a year, you can go get yourself some fertilizer or whatever they sell for missionary. Mulch from missionary. Where do you see Paul doing that? But I see a group of men here who say, listen, we're going to serve God. If you're not going to serve God, you're not going to be here. And we are in a serious sin right now. We need to fast. We need to get on our face to the God of heaven and repent. That's what's going on. It was the ninth month on the tw 20th day of the month, and all the people sat in the street, the house of God, trembling before, excuse me, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. Now, I don't know what the great rain, maybe it's cold. <laughs> or maybe it's not supposed to be raining. Study the latter rains in the Bible. And there's another one, I forget what it was, but the latter rain, earlier latter rain, something like that. Study those. Those are our tribulation passages, by the way. These people are fearing God, I mean, really, because it says trembling. They're afraid that God's going to do it all over again, destroy and send them back. Trembling because of this matter, which means they know they are guilty. It 
And Ezra the priest stood up. Well, this is three days. What's he doing? In what position is he that he had to stood up? If I can assume, I'm assuming here, you can throw this in the garbage if you want. Probably on his knees or on his face again. May I ask you a question? Since we're an early family, we do everything early. When was the last time we ever walked into church and saw the pastor on his face praying at the altar himself? Huh? When? They walked in and caught Ezra what? With a piano player? No. With his finger in the tail? No. They walk in and Ezra's probably, most likely, praying. He had to stood up, which means, again, like I said, he's either on his knees or he's on his face. They already caught him on his knees and his face before. You know what I'm amazed? I, I don't even know how many churches I've been in. I don't know how many revival meetings I've been in. I don't know how many times I've visited churches and all that. And during the altar call, I have never in my life ever seen the preacher go and stand at the altar himself. Never. I've seen the, the evangelist, I've seen the missionary on his knees. And as the priest stood up and said unto him, Ye have transgressed. Well, don't tell them they're sinners. Don't say turn or burn. Well, he gets off his knees. You are transgressors. And have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of the Lord. He names the price of Israel. He names the sin. He didn't call it shacking up. I wonder what other Bibles call it. He didn't say living with them. Well, yeah, they're, they're married to him, but. You ever wondered when he said that? You have taken strange wives. Have you ever wondered if that man, those men had their, their, their arms around them women? I don't know. I always read when I read my Bible. Now, therefore, make confession. Today, the church would be make confetti. <laughs> or confession stand. Concession stand. Not concession stand. Unto the Lord God your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Nehemiah, you bad little boy. You can't be a preacher. You are telling them to divorce their wives. Ezra, you bad little boy, you. You read the law, what it said? If they find any uncleanness in her did you read that in the law that God says I know what you guys are going to do around 457 AD I'm going to have to put something in this law that gets you out from what you just did so what any uncleanness can you find hey, these are the wrong women now I do not advocate divorce but what did Paul say to the Corinthian church about a spouse that has a, a saved spouse that has a spouse that's not saved? If they depart, let them depart. The person is not under bondage. Read your Bible, you moron. Thank you. Now, I don't think God advocates divorce, but 
uh, for some uncleanness, and if the depart, the unbelieving depart, let them depart. Do you think these Babylonian women would be believers of the God of the Bible? If they were believers, and probably were some of them, I guarantee you could keep those wives. But what about the wives that still want to be Babylonians? What do you do with them? Shall we go back to Solomon? You do know who the biggest population in the churches are, don't you? Out of male and female. I hope you do know that. And then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. Wow. But the people are many, and it's a time of much rain. And we are not able to stand without, neither is this a work of one day or two. For we are many that have transgressed in this thing. They want to get right right then and there. And they're saying, listen, this sin is just too much and it's raining. We're getting a little excuses in there, aren't we? Let now our readers, let now our rulers of all the congregations stand. Let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at the appointed times, and with them the elders of every city. And the judges thereof, unto the fierce wrath of our God, for this matter be turned from us. They're calling on the government to do first. And make it a le legal matter. You're not going to see America get right. No way. That's it. It's gone. She's gone. Romans chapter 1 said that these sodomite marriages, God's given them over. That's it. He's given us over to what we want as a nation. But there are leaders in the church that can stand up and say, I'm a sinner and I, want, I need to get right. Before the people. Not in the closet. Stand up before the congregation and say, I'm your deacon or I'm your pastor or I'm the Sunday school teacher. and I'm not going to give details, but I just want to let you know I'm a sinner. I'm going to repent. I'm going to ask God to, to wash my sins away. I need you guys to pray for me. The Bible says we're to confess to each other. And I've got to step down for a while until God works things in my life. Or, with your big fat Baptist mouth, you go up to the people you've been talking about and say, I want to say I'm sorry, but I've been gossiping behind your back for X amount of years, and I just want to repent and tell you. There's a difference between gossiping, gossiping and telling the truth. Gossiping is when you just lie about it, just say anything you want to say, or say things to other people that just don't need to be said to other people. But when you're trying to raise a family, and you don't tell anybody outside the house, but your family, and you use scripture, that's not gossiping. We'll let you know. As for me and my house, Joshua said, I'm going. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to do it right. And if I got to tell some of my family, say, listen, that guy down the street, he's not doing it right. That church over there ain't doing it right. That pastor's. Not, that's my job as a father of this household. I ain't gossip. It's training my family up right. Now, if I go say, Miss such and such, blah, 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 nobody needs to know or it's an outright right, that's gossiping. That's a sin. Now, who's going to get up and confess their sins? These people want business. They want to see the leadership do it first. Oh, um, only in Jonathan, the son of Ashiel, and Jehazel, the son of Tekla, 
were employed about this matter. And Meshulam and Shabbatai, the Levite, helped them. Well, here's a job. They're employed. Also, children of captivity did so. And Ezra the priest was certain chief of the fathers, after the house by their fathers, and all of them by their names were separated, and sat down the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. They made it a legal day, a legal documentation that we are going to not commit this sin no more. Now, and among the sons of the priests that were found that had taken strange wives. Oh my God. Ezra is going to name them my names. What did Paul say? You got a guy sleeping with his father's mother, or his father's wife, and you guys just think it's hunky dory. <laughs> you ought to turn that guy over to the devil and get him out of the church house. You're puffed up. Uh, Alexander the Coppersmith has done me much evil. You shouldn't name names. Have you read what Paul? Paul gave the name and the occupation to make sure you knew who it was. Peter, when he's dealing with the people, says, Simon the Sorcerer. What was the name of the husband and wife who defrauded the Holy Spirit and lied to the Holy Spirit? Say, yeah, we got some. He gave the names. Don't tell me you're not supposed to name names. When you're to de-church somebody in the church, you are to stand up with the proclamations of Mr. such and such has committed this sin and they are no longer allowed in this church to they repent and get right and apologize before God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit to this church for their sins. You think I'm lying? Name the sons of Jeshua, the son of Jezdak, and his brethren, Mashai, and Eliezer, and Jerib, and Gedaliah. And they gave their hands that would put away their strange wives. And being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock of their trespass. Named the name, told them that they were guilty, and then told what they brought for an offering. Look at that. The sons of Emer, Hananiah, Zabidiah, the sons of Hiram, Mashiel, Elijah, that's not Elijah, and Shemaniah, and Jehiel, and Uzziah, the sons of Pasher, Eliam, Mashiel, Ishmael, that's not the Ishmael, Nithiel, Josabad, and Elisha. Now notice it mentions their father's name. You are bringing a shame on your father's name. Because what's the excuse? I know what the excuse is. I've been in the Catholic Church. My mama, my grandma, my great grandma. And of the Levites. Well, you can't mention the Levites. They're Judge Bad and Shimael and Kaliah. The same is Kaleida. We'll give you his name, his other name, so you know it's him. Also known as Pathahiah, Judah, and Eliezer of the singers, the choir. <laughs> you ain't gonna see this in a church today. Hi, everybody. Bring the choir up. Okay. No, you guys ain't going to sing. You are an adulteress. You stole money. You are a liar. I'm saying it before the whole congregation.
Wow, Elisha Bev and the Porters. Those are people that are the doorkeepers. The, the ones that greet the people at the door. You want to bring it up to date? Show them and tell them in your eye. Moreover, Israel, the sons of Parish, Remai, Josiah, and Melchijah, and Miamim, Eleazar, and Melchijah, and Benaniah, and the sons of Elam, Mathaniah, Zechariah, and Jehili, and Abadai, and Jeremoth, and Ehiah. We've got to read all these names. They're in the Bible. Every word of God is pure. And these guys are sinners. And these guys got right. Verse 27, the sons of Zetu and Eloni and Eshabib and Mataniah and Jeremoth and Zadad and Aziah, the sons of Bebai and Jehanan and Hananiah and Zabai and Athel, I know I'm getting these names wrong, and the sons of Benai, Meshushim, Malak and Adadiah and Joseph and Sheol and Ramoth, I'm doing a lot better reading than someone else has done reading. And the sons of Path of Mo Moab. Moab? That's a pretty little name. You know what Moab is. That's the boy who had it who came from the incense of Lot and his daughter. That's a pretty little name in there. Why don't you just name him? I lost his name. Oh. Path of Sleep with Your Father. Wow, you're drunk. <laughs> you see how bad they got in? Moab was a nice name to name your boy. <laughs> Adnan and Shiliah, Benaniah and Meshiliah, Mathaniah and Bezio and Benai and Masseneth, Manasseh, the sons of Haram, Eleazar, Elijah, Machaniah, Shemaniah. You know some of these names have shown up before in Israel's history as good people? You know what one of the things that may be when Israel gets right in the tribulation, when they start having babies, they start naming them names from the Bible? Maybe hoping that they'll start living like they were supposed to. Benjamin, verse 32, Malak and Shemaniah, the sons of Hushim, Mataniah, Methanhan, Zabad, Eliphet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimeon, and the sons of Benai, Madai, Amram, and Uel, Benaniah, Bedaniah, Chilium, and Varna, Merimoth, Elishima, Mataniah, Mataniah, Joshim, and Benai, and Benaniah, and Shimeon, and Shemaliah and Nathan. Oh, that's a nice good name to say. Nathan, that's the guy that went up to David and said, Thou oh, art the man. I mean, that's not the Nathan here, but that's the name in the Bible. Machanibabiah and Shashai and Shario, Azariah and Shemila, Shemaliah, Shemul, Amariah and Joseph. Joseph? That's an interesting name. The sons of Nebo, Jael, Mathaniah, Zabad, Zebna, Zadio, Joel, Benaniah. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. What a way to end the book. What a wonderful way to end the book. And if the Messiah was coming on horseback, with his army behind him, wouldn't it be a great time to be coming back? When the nation of Israel is standing before the temple, their names have been called, they have repented, they got right with God, and wouldn't it be great now for the Messiah to come? Find this kind of thing when the life of Jesus Christ. Well, this guy, he, he believed in Jesus, but... He kept it secret because he didn't want other people to know. Nicodemus came by night. He didn't want anybody to know. This is Nicodemus, the same one that came to Jesus by night, it's recorded. You can't be a secret Christian. We don't need spies. We got enough of them.
We need men who are going to be on the battlefield. And as we close Ezra, what a wonderful way to close. They said they had children. Are you willing to leave your family for God? That's what it's talking about right here. Hey, you, you know these guys had to love the women. To marry them. And then have children by them. And the man of God get up and say, it's a sin. Because they're not going to follow God. They're not going to believe Jesus Christ as their Savior. And you got to leave them. Now, Paul says, as far as a Christian, you let the un un you let the unbeliever depart. You're to live your life so right and so righteous that that other person can't stand you. And they don't have nothing to do with you. You know, the world is not supposed to stand us. What did John and Jesus say about the world? It's supposed to hate us. It's not supposed to love us. The world ought to be saying, I don't have anything to do with you. Get out of our place. Don't bring that on our place. Don't tell us about your Jesus. Don't give us your life. Don't give us that piece of paper. Don't give us. We don't want it. They say, well, yeah, we do get that kind of response. But what about the churches where the world is welcomed? And they feel happy. It's not right. It's not right. When the world gets along with a Christian, that's not right. You are defying the scriptures. Even though you do your job like you're supposed to, you're as honest as can be. They're supposed to hate you because you know what? You are the example. We're to be separated. Now, we don't go live off in a cave nowhere. That, that's foolish. We're to live separated, but we're to go in the world and tell them about Jesus. We're to show the light of the gospel, not our lives. We have no light. We're artificial. Every light that man makes is artificial. There's a time in our lives and a time of the church's life and the Christian's life that we may have to forsake all. Especially if we're going to go into bondage, if we're going to go into persecution. There may come a time when a wife has to tell her husband, Don't you give up. Let them kill you in the name of Christ. You know a woman in the Bible that said, give God up. Don't serve God no more. There was a woman in the Bible that looked back at all her stuff. It was a wicked woman had her own gods, her own priest. They didn't give up on the world. Those, those women are burning in hell today. The Bible says that our rewards will be based upon Gold, silver, and precious stones. 
five crowns. You want to make a best friend? You go out there and tell someone about Jesus Christ. Watch them get saved. And have them spend all eternity praising Jesus and thanking you for telling you about it. You ain't doing your, your co-workers, your family, your friends. And this is for the video mostly. Because we do we tell people. This is for you people listening. It makes you no good. I'm gonna be I'm not gonna tell my friends, my my relatives, anybody about Jesus. So they can curse you in, in hell for the rest of their life. If Ezra and Nehemiah and them are picturing the tribulation and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine Jesus Christ coming back. Imagine us coming on horseback when we see this little raiment of people in Jerusalem get right. Can you imagine the smile on Jesus' face? That the Jews have finally got right and they look to the sky and here comes the Messiah. And they ask him. This is scripture, and you can follow this wrong. What are those wounds in your hands? I got them amongst my friends, your fathers. We'll close there.